Welcome back to the Snowpoint cast. Today we're going to be looking at a deck from the Primal Clash to Guardians Rising format, Espeon Garbodor. So let's get right into it. Starting off with four Trebish. <clears throat> you play the Acid Spray Trebish just because it's better. So 70 HP for one Psychic Acid Spray. Flip a coin if heads discarded energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So really good uh, stall there, especially if your opponent gets to go first. This can be a really good swing to kind of get you back uh, into the momentum of the game, especially if they put an energy on a Drampa GX. Um, it can be really good to Acid Spray that if you get hit a heads. One, it pings them for some damage. This isn't usually a big deal unless you have a choice band. Um, but being able to remove that energy means they likely will be able to attack with that Drampa next turn. So really Really solid attack on that basic. You're playing three of the Trash Launch Garbodor, so Trash Launch Garbodor has 120 HP. It's one of your main attackers in the deck. Um, Trash Launch for one Psychic does 20 times the amount of item cards in your opponent's discard pile. They're really punishing um, like speed decks, decks that play like Max Elixirs, Aqua Patch, stuff like that. Um, and honestly, any th this card really punishes any player that's not really mindful of how many items they're playing because it can really add up super quickly, especially into the mid and late game stages of uh, a game. Uh, and then Acid Spray actually has some uses as well. So Acid Spray for Psychic Double Cullis does 70. Flip a coin if heads discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. So, you know, same attack as the basic, discarding an energy. But that uh, damage is actually really good because the main use... Uh, so I played in this format, and one of the main uses that I found for this attack was in the Garbodor Mirror when your opponent is playing really well. So let's say you go first, you get an attachment on a Trubbish, and your opponent goes first. They go attach, Acid Spray, maybe heads, maybe tails. If it's tails, that's a big bummer. Or if, it, if it's heads, that's a big bummer. But if it's tails, then you have the opportunity to go DCE, Garbodor, and then you can just kill them next turn with uh, Acid Spray. So that is a really solid thing, being able to kill a Trubbish or an opposing Garbodor when your opponent doesn't even have enough items in the discard to be able to one-shot them is really, really great. Um, also, if you put a choice band on there, being able to hit 200 is also great in certain situations uh, if you're playing against something that's psychic weak. This is playing again, or you're also playing one of the uh, Garbotoxin Garbodor. So 100 HP, a little less HP there, but Garbotoxin is so worth it. So Garbotoxin, you have a tool attached to this Pokemon. Uh, all abilities of all Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, uh, are disactivated so they don't work anymore, which is really nice, really good to shut off. You know, Tapu Lele, uh, there's a ton of decks and cards in the format that really strive off ability so being able to just lock those down is a great strategy and then you can attack with this guy it's not often you're gonna find yourself attacking with him because his attack's really costly but i have attacked with this garbodor before so psychic three colorless it does 60 and then your opponent's active pokemon is now confused and poisoned so it essentially does 70 with poison but not an attack you're gonna often be using because you need at least three manual attaches to get there and that just doesn't happen unless you only have a trubbish and this garbodor and a brick hand pretty much I was playing three Eevee, <clears throat> so the energy evolution Eevee um, is great. So 60 HP, energy evolution, when you attach a basic energy from your hand to this Pokemon um, during a turn, you may search your deck for a Pokemon, a card that evolves from this Pokemon um, that is the same type as that energy. So you're just finding Espeon because you only play basic psychic energy. Uh, and then quick draw for one color, flip a coin of heads, draw a card. So I guess that's okay, not really a great attack at all there. But energy evolution is so good that uh, you don't really mind the bad attack because you can hit a turn one um, attack with an Espeon if you're going second because you can just energy evolution and then the Espeon GX, which we'll talk about right now, uh, 200 HP. So that's why the Acid Spray Choice Band is really relevant because you can hit this Espeon for weakness if you're playing the mirror match. Um, and then you can side beam them uh, if you're going second on your first turn. So you can go energy evolution, side beam, one psychic for 30, and then your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. So confusion is actually a really good um, effect in pretty much any format. Forcing your opponent to either switch or, you know, flip a coin to get an attack off sometimes means that they'll just pass their turn. And it's not even just a pass, they'll take 30 damage instead of attacking. So really solid early game pressure there. And then the late game pressure with psychic and divide is also great. So psychic for psychic double colorless. The 60 plus 30 for each energy uh, attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So just kind of punishing your opponent's big um, energy Pokemon. Also with uh, Choice Belt, you're able to one-shot a Drampa for two, two energy, essentially, with a Psychic and a DCE. You hit them for 90, and then if they have three energy attached, you hit them for another 90. And Drampa GX has 180 HP, so you're able to one-shot a Drampa there, which is actually really nice. And then Divide GX has a lot of uh, really good uses as well. I'm just going to pick this card up and read it because it's a little bit small. So Divide GX, Psychic Double Colors, put 10 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. So that's really great, especially if your opponent is kind of stumbling upon their setup. If you're able to hit this early Divide attack off, one, you can set up knockouts for later, but two, you're able to, like, hit... Trubbish with it. Trubbish is one of your big um, 
like threats because like i said acid spray can one shot you if they have a choice belt which is really not or choice band rather i keep saying choice belt um choice band just because it's not you know you don't want to get one shot by a, a one prizer uh you just trade poorly on prizes there and being able to one set up a knockout for later and also take out a trubbish or you know depending on what your opponent's playing if they're playing vespaquin this attack can take two knockouts on two combis which is also really crazy um kind of just depends on what your opponent's board but a really solid gx attack in a lot of situations I was playing one Flareon. So Flareon's got 90 HP. You play it for the ability. The ability each of your stage one Pokemon in play is now a fire type Pokemon in additional, in addition to its existing types. So this is mainly a Metagross GX tech. Um, that's pretty much the only reason you play this. I guess it can be okay for bees in some situations, but you know, usually you're one shotting a Vespaquin anyway. Um, but Metagross on the other hand, I think it has 250 HP or 230. It's a really tanky guy. I'll put him up on screen. Um, but this can be a really problematic matchup for you because they play a lot of healing cards. Uh, and also I think it's resistant to psychic. It's a really tough matchup, pretty much an auto loss. But if you play this tech card, um, it gives you a real good shot because you're able to one, you can one shot them with a psychic on, uh, Espeon if you, uh, if they have some energy on them, which is just really clutch. So really good tech card in that matchup. It's also playing three Tapu Lele GX. So honestly, uh, it's pretty staple in this format. Just a really good consistency Pokemon. So Tapu Lele has got 170 HP, Psychic type. Uh, Wonder Tag is the ability. So when you bench Tapu Lele from your hand, you can search your deck for a supporter card and put it in your hand. So just great uh, supporter consistency. Keeps you drawing, keeps you hitting uh, Lysander consistently. Um, and then energy drive is the attack so for double colorless energy it does 20 times the amount of energy attached to you and your opponent's active so it does a base 40 if you have the energy required required for the attack uh, and then depending on how much energy your opponent has this is a really good cleanup pokemon because you do play double colorless energy in the deck so being able to swing with a basic for a lot of damage can be really good uh, and then tapu cure you can use um but i'm not really going to talk about it because it's not often the gx attack that you're going to be using in the deck read it it could be okay but uh often you're going to be wanting to divide unless you're for some reason have a bunch of damage on your bench okay then you're also playing one ditto so this ditto is actually really interesting i really like this tech card so this is kind of another mirror match tech ditto um has got 70 hp metamorphosis gene is the ability so if this pokemon is your active pokemon it can use the attacks of your opponent's active pokemon so that's the main ability that you uh, use it for, and it's for other Trash and Lanch Garbodor. So Trash and Lanch Mirror kind of works something like this. During your early game, you're really conservative with your items, and you're saying, hey, I need to keep my items to two or less, because if it gets to three, then my opponent can one-shot me with a Trash and Lanch. So you keep it to two. But then around the mid, especially late game, but even mid game, you get to a point you're like, well, we're already one-shotting each other with Garbodors. We already have three items, so I may as well get more items in the discard because we're already one-shotting one another. Um, especially when you need to set up with stuff like Ultra Ball or use VS Seeker to get uh, supporters back. You just have to do that. So there gets a point where you have to have a fair amount of items in your discard pile. So once it gets to six, six is the magic number for Ditto. Once there's six items in the discard, you're able to uh, copy an opponent's Trash Lanch for one Psychic, and then you hit them for 120, because Trash Lanch does 20 times the amount of items in your opponent's discard. So if they have six items, you have Ditto, not Psychic Week, so it's not three, but you go Psychic, copy Trash Lanch, kill them with Trash Lanch, and the really nice part about Ditto is he's a basic Pokemon. So you can whiff a Trubbish setup, you know, that's kind of one of the things that can be problematic in the Garbatoxin Mirror, or the Garbador Mirror rather, is if you wish it, whiff a Trubbish and they kill your Garbador, you don't have something to attack with next turn, and then you probably lose because they're gonna keep swinging into you with Garbador, a one prize that's swinging for a lot of damage, and even if you're able to kill that with an Espeon, it's forcing you to put a two prizer up, and in that point, if they have another Garbador, you're probably just done anyway. So. Being able to go instead, ditto, KO, I missed a Trubbish, ditto, Psychic, KO, is a really good momentum swing that you can uh, use against your opponent, uh, especially in the Trash Launch Mirror. There are a lot of other situations where, you know, if you have the necessary uh, energy, um, like you need the necessary energy to use ditto, so it's not crazy good, but there are other situations, you know, like, um, depending on what you're matched up against, that it could be good. Like maybe against a Drampa, if you have uh, a Psychic and a Double Colorless Energy and some damage on a bench Pokemon, you can go uh, attach a Choice Bend and then um, kill a Drampa. So that's another situation, but mostly it's there for Trash Lunch because Trash Lunch was just so prevalent in this format. It was everywhere and you had to be prepared for it. Okay, so moving on, we got four Ultra Ball, kind of just a staple uh, item card. Discard two cards from your hand, search your deck for a Pokemon. So just a really great uh, Pokemon item based uh, Pokemon search. You just need it in every deck. It's so good. It's staple in this format. Uh, you just play four of in most every deck. 
Let's play four VS Seeker in this deck. So VS Seeker just kind of keeps your late game and mid game supporters a little more consistent. So put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. Um, this is great for fighting a lot of your tech supporters. Like you do play Lysander um, and some other tech supporters that we'll get into in a sec, but it just keeps that really consistent, especially with Professor Sycamore being one of your main draw supporters. It discards your hand and draws seven. So it just means that you'll have access to those into the late game, even if you had to discard them with a Professor Sycamore. Okay, so you're also playing four choice band. So Choice Band plays two roles in this deck. One is obviously a damage buff. So Choice Band, uh, the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX. So like I was saying before, the Acid Spray play with a Choice Band lets you one-shot an Espeon, which is nice. Um, and kind of just depending on what you're playing against, n being aware of your number modification being necessary. Like, for example, Tepu Lele has 170 HP. If they have seven items in the discard pile, you're dealing 140. And then with a choice band, you can kill it if they have seven items. So that's a, a relevant number for that as well. And the second reason that you play it, other than uh, modifying your damage, is because it's a tool card. So you're able to have it on a Garbodor if you uh, really, really need to lock your opponent's abilities. Kind of depends on the matchup. It's not your optimal tool to have on a Garbodor, but sometimes it's more important to lock them up than have access to a choice band or even have a floatstone on a Garbodor. Speaking of, look at this transition. Uh, you're playing for floatstone as well. So this is the better tool to have on a Garbodor just because it provides free retreat. So when you attach floatstone to a Pokemon, uh, that Pokemon has no retreat cost. So Garbodor has a pretty hefty three retreat. So you really don't want to be in a position, like, you know, there are positions where if you have a choice band, you can go choice band, lock them up, and it's more important to lock abilities than wait for the floatstone. But if you can wait for the floatstone, it's a lot better because then that prevents you from getting Lysander stalled. Um, it does have three retreats, so you have to attach a Psychic and then attach a DCE manually. And that can buy your opponent a couple turns, which is not usually what you want to let them do. So you play four floatstone and four choice band just to keep your tools consistent. You find tools all the time with a four four line. So I really like the four four line, it's just super consistent. And also keeping your mobility, right? Like sometimes you want to attack with a trash launch Garbodor, sometimes you want to attack with an Espeon, sometimes you want to switch into another trash launch Garbodor. Like let's say you're you have two items in your discard and your opponent had to swing into you with a trash launch garbador if you have access to another trash launch garbador and they have say like three items and they swung into you for two for 80 you can retreat to another garbador kill them and then they also can't return KOU, and you're in an amazing position. So Floatstone, great to keep your mobility there as well. Sometimes you want to attack with Tapu Lele or Ditto as well. It kind of depends on the situation, but it just keeps your attackers really mobile. You're also playing one Field Blower. So this is to turn off your opponent's Garbodors if you uh, need to do that to have access to Tapu Lele or Ditto or whatever. And also it provides a way to get items into your opponent's discard pile. So tools or item cards, if your opponent has two of them in play, you can play a Field Blower and then all of a sudden your Garbodor is doing 40 more damage. So that damage buff with Field Blower is too good not to play at least a one of. And then you're also playing a Rescue Stretcher. So Rescue Stretcher, choose one, put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand, or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. So great for recovering Garbodor lines. Like getting a 1-1 Garbodor line and a Ditto back is great, but also attacking with a Ditto, and like like that situation I was mentioning before, if you don't have access to another Trubbish, some for some reason you're whiffing Trubbish, they kill your Ditto. If you have something with a Floatstone, you can promote it. Rescue Stretcher, take the Ditto back, bench it, attach a Psychic, and then still be attacking and taking knockouts and because if you're missing a knockout in the mirror match, it's really bad. So Rescue Stretcher, great for getting any line back, but especially your Garbodor and Dittos. So we're playing one Parallel City. So Parallel City has two sides. I'm just going to read them because it's a pretty, pretty small text. So choose which way this faces before you play it. And one way is any damage done by attacks um, from this player's Pokemon from grass, fire, or water Pokemon is reduced by 20. So there are situations where that's pretty good. Being able to uh, reduce Greninja's damage especially can be important. Or um, the other way, which is the one you're going to be using more often, it's the better way. So choose which way, uh, blah, blah, blah. This player can't have more than three benched Pokemon when this card comes into play. That player discards bench Pokemon until here she has three benched Pokemon on the bench. So the reason that that's super good is because you play two prize Pokemon. So you can attack with an Espeon, get swung into, and you don't really want to leave that on the bench because Lysander and, you know, Lycanroc GX, there's a lot of cards that your opponent can play that bring up bench Pokemon. So if you have a parallel city, you can play the three bench side on yourself and discard your liabilities. So Tapu Lele is another example of that. You really want to use Wonder Tag, but you don't really want that two prizer sitting on your bench because as I mentioned in the late game, Garbodor can one shot it. So you really don't want to have that. And especially if you have damage on it, it's just a massive liability. So being able to parallel city, force you to go down to three bench. If you have five, you can discard two of your Pokemon. Usually one of them is going to be one that you don't want a Tapu Lele or a Pokemon with damage on it. And it 
in really good situations, um, you're going to have two Pokemon that you want to get rid of, like an Espeon with damage and a Tapu Lele. And that can really hurt your opponent because if they attacked into uh, an Espeon and then you discard it, it's kind of like you wasted one of their turns because that Pokemon's not on the board anymore. So Parallel City, really, really great po uh, great stadium card in this deck. You're also playing three Professor Juniper, so getting into the supporter cards now. Um, three Professor Juniper, discard your hand, draw seven. So just... It's not Professor Juniper, it's Professor Sycamore, actually. I lied. Because Juniper doesn't exist in this format. But the there's so many decks that just need four of Sycamore that this is a proxy for it. It does the exact same thing. But the card has to be Professor Sycamore, so I'll put a Professor Sycamore on screen. Um, but yeah, just discard your hand draw seven. Really great draw support um, in any format that this card exists in. I'm also playing three N, so um, I'm going to take a little bit to talk about N because it's a little bit more of an important card in this deck. So in uh, each player shuffles his or her hand to his or her deck and then draws for their remaining prize cards. So really good early game draw. I mean, it's a shuffle draw six. Your opponent gets a shuffle draw six as well, but you usually don't mind that because you're getting the draw uh, also. And then late game, when your opponent has one or two prizes left, you're able to disrupt them a lot. So especially with Garbatoxin Garbodor. So this is one of the combos that has existed since Garbatoxin has been released. And Garbatoxin is so good because all of your opponents, like, helpful support Pokemon that might help them draw out of an end brick late game, like a Tapu Lele, or if, you, if they have two prizes, let's say, an Ultra Ball becomes a live out because then you can Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele. If you have Garbatoxin online with a tool and then you also end your opponent, it means that they have to raw draw into a supporter off of the end, which is a lot to ask sometimes. I mean, they can do it. VS Seeker makes it a little bit more viable. But there are also times where your opponent just whiffs it and then you win the game at that point because they're not drawing anything. Especially in the Trash Launch Mirror, usually you need to hit an Energy and a Trash Launch Garbodor every turn to be trading. And if they can't do that off of an end Garbotoxin, then they probably lose. Okay, so we're playing two Lysander. So Lysander, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with his or her active Pokemon. So just being able to bring up any bench Pokemon, like I was saying, the Tapu Lele, seven items in discard. If you have a choice ban, you can just bring up a bench Lele and then swing at it for two prizes, which is a great trade for you. And then you play four VS Seeker as well, so you're able to have access to this uh, throughout the, pretty much the whole game whenever you have uh, VS Seeker. You're also playing one Teammate, so I think Teammates is one of the uh, most amazing cards in this deck. It's so, so, so good. Um, it just lets you stream stuff, so let's say... Um, I'm just bringing the Garbodor Mirror up because it's pretty relevant, and this list is a little bit geared towards it because it's such a good card. Trash Launch Garbodor is so amazing that you just have to play cards that um, help you against other Trash Launch Garbodors, otherwise you're going to be in a bit of trouble. So Teammates is one of those cards that can really help you out there. So you can play this card only if one of your opponent was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. So search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. So if you have multiple Trubbish on the bench, this just lets you find Garbodor and uh, Psychic Energy. Like I was mentioning before, just being able to hit those consistently so you can keep on trash launching and keep on doing damage is really amazing. Also, you know, depending on whatever your opponent does, being able to find certain cards to be able to one-shot, like I was saying, the Acid Spray, Double Colorless Choice Band can be really relevant depending on what you're playing against. So being able to find those two cards, or really any two combo cards, Field Blower can be really good, Ditto, Rescue Stretcher, really depends on what your board is, but being able to search your deck for any two cards is just, uh, it's it's way too good not to play this as a one of. So just playing one Bridget. So Bridget, search your deck for one basic Pokemon EX or three basic Pokemon ex except for Pokemon EX and put them onto your bench, shuffle your deck afterward. So great setup card, really uh, solid in any evolution deck. Pretty much every evolution deck plays at least one of these because it's so good. So it helps you find your Eevees, your Trubbishes, uh, can also find Tapu Lele or Ditto. So kind of depending on what you need, oftentimes it's going to be getting multiple Trubbish just because finding Trubbish usually your Garbodors are going to getting knocked out because they're the threat. So your opponent's going to see that as a threat, go to knock it out. And then if you have Bridget early, it's your optimal turn one supporter because, you know, you're just setting up and it's really great for setting up. Um, but once you get a Bridget off, if you have multiple Trubbish into play, it just means that, like I said, if you have the teammates and then they kill one of your Pokemon, you can just go, okay, Tapu Lele, teammates, find a Trash Lance Garbodor and a Psychic, and then all of a sudden I'm attacking. So Bridget, great setup supporter to kind of help you get set up. You're also playing one Hex Maniac. So it seems kind of counterproductive when you already play Garbotox and Garbodor, but Ability Lock is so good in this format that you just need to play um, a one of of this card. And it also got banned because it's so good. So it really makes sense that you play one. It's not banned in this format, uh, so you play it. So until the end of your opponent's next turn, each Pokemon to play in each player's hand and in each player's discard pile has no ability. So this is especially useful if um, your opponent is able to knock out your Garbotox and Garbodor, right? You want to be locking abilities. You have Ability Lock. They find a Lysander and a KO, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to lock you the next turn because I don't have access to a Trubbish, perhaps, or I can't find my Rescue Stretcher or whatever. It lets you go 
Tapu Lele, Wonder Tank, find Hex Maniac, and then still remain on that lock um, in between turns. This is especially good against Greninja Break. You can really struggle against Greninja Break if they get set up and are able to one-shot your Garbodor or get rid of it. Um, and being able to keep maintain that lock uh, while you set up a little bit more is really good, especially because Eevee has 60 HP. So getting Giant Water Shuriken is just really not a valid strategy on that. It's just like one Professor Kakui, so kind of a damage modifier card that's pretty good in a lot of decks. So draw two cards. During this turn, the uh, your opponent's or your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So kind of a good damage buff there. Um, lets you have some sneaky plays, especially with Choice Band. So Choice Band and Kakui, uh, in addition to one another, buff your damage by 50. So you can be able to, you know, find sneaky KOs where your opponent is being really intentional with their items in their discard pile. They're like, okay, I got six items in my discard. I'm not in threat of uh, getting knocked out and I'm gonna attack with this Tapu Lele this turn. And they swing into you with a Tapu Lele on your Espeon or something. And then you can go Kukui, Choice Band, Trash Lanch, KO. So being able to just modify your damage is really good, especially against other good players who are being really intentional with their uh, items in their discard pile. Okay, so getting into the energy cards, you're going to be playing four double colorless energy. So DCE is just so good in this deck. Like I said, Acid Spray requires a DCE on the Garbodor. Also, Espeon and Tapu Lele both require a DCE to be attacking effectively and efficiently. So just playing four makes a lot of sense. And then you're also playing eight basic energy, um, which, you know, also, like I was saying, Psychic's really important for the EV and also for streaming Garbodor, so you want to be finding Psychic energies all the time. Uh, there's some lists I've seen that play seven, but I think eight is the preferable count just because it's so important. And especially early game, if you start an EV, being able to find a Psychic can really snowball your momentum if you're able to hit an early, uh, is it Psy Shock? Psybeam. If you're able to hit an early Psybeam into Confuse, um, and it just keeps your early uh, energy evolutions consistent as well. Okay, well, this has been uh, Espeon Garbodor from the Primal Clash to Guardians Ryzen format. If you have any questions about the deck, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get to them. And uh, as always, thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you next time.